Greetings peeps, Mitch Hightower here. Welcome to the Mitch and Phillips channel. As you can see today, I'm out in our messy overgrown backyard. Why am I out in the backyard? Because I have a really fun art project going on. Hang out and I'll show you every detail. Okay, so in case you were wondering why I was blowing into my disposable gloves, I find these gloves are much easier to put on when they're filled with air rather than all crumpled up from the package. Okay, so as you can see here, I have two sawhorses set up with some old boards running across them to use as my work surface for painting today, and I'm using a 12 by 24 inch canvas. For this project, I'm going to employ three different painting techniques. One is an airbrush-like effect using spray paint, and the two other techniques will be pouring and splattering liquefied acrylic paint. Okay, so here you can see I have two of the three different spray cans that I'm going to be using for this project. And speaking of products, today, before we get started, let me give you a complete list of all of the different art products I'm going to be using to create this painting. Here I have three different spray paints, two of which are Liquitex brand. One is magenta and the other is turquoise. The image all the way to the right shows a can of Rust-Oleum, two times ultra cover metallic paint. This is a supremely bright gold paint and I love this color. As a paint extender, I'm using a product from Flood called Floetrol. This product is widely available at hardware stores, usually found in the department where other paint products, as in for painting walls, would be sold. I'm also using some Liquitex acrylic paints from Tubes. I have magenta, phthalo green, and fluorescent pink. I've also got some acrylic craft quality paint that's black. And for a little more metallic action, I've got a bottle of DecoArt Extreme Sheen metallic paint in gold. Here I have a clear plastic face shield that I like to wear because I really don't want to get paint on my face or on my glasses. Of course, I like to keep a roll of paper towels handy for almost any project because there are most likely to be at least one or two messes that I'm going to have to clean up while I'm painting today. Here I have plastic paint mixing cups that have measurements on the sides. These are very convenient and they can be washed and used over and over. And of course, the canvas as I mentioned earlier. This canvas is what's called gallery wrap and that means it's extra thick on the sides. This one is an inch and a half and the canvas wraps all the way around the sides nice and cleanly with no staples so you can paint the sides of the canvas and these types of canvases do not require framing. Okay, so I've got my face shield on and the canvas is set up and the first thing I need to do with these spray paints is shake them very, very thoroughly. I'm just going to keep shaking and shaking. You can hear the agitator ball moving around. I like to make sure these spray paints are extremely thoroughly mixed. I find they dispense from the can much easier that way and it gives a much better painting result. Okay, so here we go with the magenta. I'm just going to gently go back and forth. I'm going to fill up approximately a third of the canvas I'm expecting. And I want to make sure that I spray the sides as well, because once I start pouring and splattering over the top, I want the paint to run down the edges of the canvas. So the painting itself will continue all the way around the sides. Okay, notice right there I turned the can upside down and dispensed the excess paint from the nozzle. That will help keep the nozzle clean when we come back to spray again. Okay, so now it's time to get something going on here with this turquoise paint. So I'm going to make sure that I give this can a very thorough and extremely vigorous shake. Like I mentioned before, I want the paint to be extremely well mixed. Okay, so let's go in here with this turquoise blue. I have to say the first thing I notice as this paint is coming out is that this is not really a shade of turquoise I'm familiar with. It looks a little more like teal blue to me. Meanwhile, it is a lovely color and I think I can make this work. Now as you can see here, I'm making sure to get paint all the way down the sides of the canvas. Ultimately, I don't want to leave any part of this canvas unpainted. Okay, so I'm going to fill up approximately the same area I did with the magenta paint with this blue color. Okay, so far so good. Now off screen here, I dispense the can again upside down to get rid of the excess paint in the nozzle. 
Okay, now it's time for this lovely metallic gold. And when I say metallic, I'm not kidding. Also take notice, once again, I am giving this can an extremely vigorous shake. The metallic paints especially need to be very well mixed to dispense properly and to give you the true color that they're intending you to have. Okay, so let's give this a shot and see how this goes. Ooh, I just love this bright gold. And as you can see, it's reflecting the sunlight very nicely. Suddenly the canvas brightened up considerably. Okay, so we're just gonna go in here and fill in this area that remained the white of the canvas. And I wanna make sure I have all the white of the canvas completely covered with paint. That looks pretty good so far. Now I wanna go in here and make sure I'm getting gold paint over on these edges. I don't want any of this canvas to remain unpainted. Okay, well we've got a lot of gold action going on there. Now let's dispense the excess paint once again. There we go. That'll help keep this can reusable until the paint's actually all gone. Now I think I've overdone it just a little bit with the gold here, so I'm gonna go back in with the magenta again and overlap the magenta on top of the gold paint. Here we go. Well, that looks good. Now I wanna be careful. I wanna keep the edges very soft. I don't really want hard line. I want this to have more of an ombre kind of effect rather than a hard line between where the colors change. I think I also am gonna go back in here with the turquoise blue. Like I said earlier, this blue does not look like any turquoise shade I've ever seen. So while it is the color of the top of the can, it's not really accurate by the name. So in the future, I think I'll choose paints based on what the color of the can looks like rather than the name that the manufacturer is giving it. Anyway, I think I can work with this teal blue this is a very nice shade and it will definitely go well with the other colors I've already picked out to use for this project. Okay, now as you can see, once again, I'm making sure I clean the nozzle of the can out. That's a very important thing to do because if you've ever had a clogged nozzle, you know it can be almost impossible to get dried paint out of these paint nozzles. Okay, so here we have it. I think I've finished the spray portion of this project at this point, and I've got my phone out here because I wanna take a picture of what this looks like before I do anything else to this canvas. So I find outside it's very difficult <laughs> to see my phone when I have my dark glasses on, and that's why it's taking me so long to bring the camera up here on my phone. But meanwhile, I did get a picture, and I'm gonna piece it in right about here. Okay, there you have it. As you can see, I've got the entire canvas covered with the three different colors of paint, and I've tried to create sort of a gradation or an ombre effect where the colors change, rather than, as I mentioned earlier, a harsh line. I'm not looking for a harsh line at this point. I want this to just be as soft as possible so it'll contrast really nicely with the other techniques I have planned for this project. Okay, so here you can see I'm getting out some of the measuring cups I mentioned earlier when I gave you the list of materials that I'm using today. And the next process is going to be mixing some of the acrylic paint that I have on hand here with the Floatrol product that I mentioned before. Now mixing all this paint up is gonna take a few minutes, so let me just give you a quick rundown while I'm setting this up exactly what's going to happen. As far as ratios for how much Floatrol and how much paint to mix together, that really depends on the techniques that you're employing and the outcome that you're looking for. The more you water down the paint, the more it will move around the canvas. I will say, however, that I find while Floatrol does extend your paint product, it does not necessarily thin it down significantly. And if you want to thin the consistency of your paint after you've added the Floatrol, you can always add small amounts of water, a little bit at a time, and stir it in thoroughly until you get the consistency that you're looking for. For this project today, I'm mixing the colors approximately one part paint to four parts Floatrol. And the only color that I'm adding water to is the black that I'm going to mix up. And that's because I intentionally want to have it a little bit thinner so it moves around the canvas more easily than the other colors do. 
So at this point, you can see in the left and center panels, I'm spending a considerable amount of time stirring. That is because you want to make sure that the acrylic paint and the Floetrol are very, very thoroughly mixed together. You don't want to see any streaks of the Floetrol amidst the paint or vice versa. So I make sure I stir and stir and stir. And just when you think you've stirred enough, stir just a little bit more. Okay, in the right panel, what you're seeing here is I've just added some Floetrol to some black acrylic craft paint, and I'm stirring and stirring and stirring and stirring that together as well. I've also added just a little bit of water off screen, and I'm checking right now to make sure this is the consistency I'm looking for, and I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna take the stir stick at this point and just splash some on the canvas and see what happens. Okay. That seemed to work out reasonably well, but at this point, I really want to get more paint on the canvas, so I'm going to just pour some of this black right on the canvas. So what I think I want to achieve here is a positive gestalt. And while you're watching this video filmed from what is actually upside down, what I'm trying to do from my vantage point is to create visual lines that go from the lower portion of the left side of the canvas to the upper portion of the right side of the canvas. Okay, and eventually I get to the bottom of the black paint and I just decide I'm gonna splash as much of this paint on the canvas as I can. I'm okay with it just sort of doing its own thing and being a little bit irregular. I think in college we used to call this design by accident. Now one of the things I'm going to go back in and do is make sure that this paint has run down the edges on both sides of the canvas as well as the top and bottom. I really want the design to wrap around the entire gallery edge and sometimes in order to do that the paint needs just a little bit of help. I also have to say that I did notice that the black paint being as watered down as it was did not adhere on top of the metallic gold as well as it did on the magenta or the turquoise spray paint. I find it's necessary to be really careful when you go in and sort of try to manufacture effects in paintings like this because it can start to look artificial really fast. So I don't really want to be overdoing it with this foam paintbrush. I'm just going to try to let the paint do its own thing. I intentionally mixed this black paint with a more watery consistency so I could lift the canvas up and tip and turn it around if I need to move the paint a little bit more. We'll see if that happens as this project continues to unfold. So at this point, what I'm doing is I want to create a small cup of layered paint. And that is to say, I'm going to add just a small amount of each of the different colors that I've already mixed up layered on top of each other. Then I'm going to use a pouring technique that's often referred to as a ribbon pour and just streak and splash some of this mixture of paint across the canvas. I just love this hot pink paint. I'm going to put that in last, so that'll be the first color to come out of the paint cup. And there you have it. I'm just streaking it and splashing it on the canvas. I think this is a really cool effect. It creates really nice fine lines of paint across the canvas, and I think it looks really cool. Okay, so here I'm using the phthalo green, and this is actually going to dry and be a much different color because it's going to get deeper and darker and richer. At this point, having added the Floetrol to the paint, it really looks much more like a turquoise color, which is actually closer to the color I was expecting the spray paint to turn out to be. Okay, so I'm going to go back in with some of this medium magenta and splash some lines across the canvas in the same direction I have with just about everything else. And of course, I don't want to leave behind any of this lovely hot pink paint. So I'm going to give this a good stir again, and I think I'm going to do a little bit more pouring on here. There we go. 
I want to make sure there's a lot of nice hot pink spread around the canvas. I'm not sure how this color is actually going to look when it dries being on top of different colored backgrounds. That's one of the fun things about doing these kind of paintings is they'll look a certain way when they're wet and once they're dry, which I will show you before this video ends, they can wind up looking quite different. It'll be fun to see how this turns out. Okay, so at this point, I've taken a toothbrush and I've dipped it in some of the leftover paint and I'm trying to just flick on small specks of paint in different places. But I have to say, this technique was not as effective as I would have liked it to have been because the paintbrush that I have has bristles that are really much too soft to get this kind of effect. And I should have considered that when I was picking a brush from our stash of old toothbrushes. Anyway, I wound up using it as a vehicle to, as you can see, just sort of splatter on some of the hot pink paint. And that wound up giving me some cool effects, even though it wasn't really quite what I started out to do. That's one of the things I find about doing these really abstract sort of paintings is sometimes you have to be willing to pivot when one technique doesn't quite work the way you expect it to or give you the results that you were hoping for. Meanwhile, I'm going to stand back and have a look at this because I think so far it's looking actually quite interesting. So one of the things I do notice though is I want to introduce a little bit more gold and that's why I got the gold paint I mentioned in the materials list earlier. This is a liquid acrylic product and I'm going to mix it with some Floetrol and I'm going to splash some of this around the canvas as well. So what you see at this point is I've gotten out a fresh measuring cup for the 24 karat gold paint. I'm going to add a small amount of that to this cup and then I'm going to add some Floetrol and very, very thoroughly stir this together. Especially as I mentioned before, with any of the metallic paint, you wanna make sure that whatever medium that you're mixing them with, so you get a nice even color and consistency of your paint medium. Okay, so at this point, I think it's sufficiently stirred and I'm going to use the stir stick itself to start to splash some of this 24 karat metallic gold paint around the canvas in different places. I'm just sort of doing this kind of randomly. I want the lines, as I said before, to sort of go from the lower left to the upper right. But I'm also just letting the universe decide where some of the paint lands because I think that's kind of fun as well. I have to say I do really like the way this metallic gold paint is looking. I think, you know, with gold you can you can really never go wrong with some gold. So, I'm very happy to get to use this today because this is a cool look and I think it's giving me results I was hoping for. But now I want to actually put some more gold in that looks just slightly more controlled with the same lower left to upper right orientation, I'm gonna run just a few streaks of gold across the canvas with the remainder of the paint in this cup. Okay, there you have it. I think that is looking pretty good. Now, the next thing that I did is I grabbed a straw. In a couple of places, I'm gonna go around and just do a little blowing on some of the paint to get the colors to sort of swirl together and create interesting effects. I don't want to overdo this technique, however, because so far I like how everything looks like it sort of evolved naturally, so I don't want any other techniques that I add to look too forced. Though I have to say overall, while I'm standing out here in the yard working on this, this is actually turning out better than I was expecting, and I'm kind of digging it. So at this point, I'm gonna go back in with some of the small amounts of remaining paint and just add them to the edge of the canvas to make sure we have nice pretty effects running down the sides of the canvas as well. Okay, so earlier I mentioned tip and turn as a technique for moving the paint around the canvas and I think I'm gonna give that a shot right about now. So what that means is I'm just going to lift up the canvas and tip it in one direction and then possibly turn it and tip it in another direction. Here we go. Over to the other side just a little bit. This can just gently move the paint around the canvas in a very natural, organic kind of way. And it also can create some really cool effects when you let the different colors run into each other. Okay, that's looking kind of dramatic. Okay, we'll let this just run back the other direction just a little bit. I wanna see some of this metallic gold mixing into the black a little bit. 
I think when those two colors mix together, that'll create some really nice contrast. And also I happen to know from previous experience that the metallic paint dissolves into the black in a really interesting way and can create some very cool visual effects. Okay, here's one of those times when I need to grab the paper towels because I want to make sure I don't have any paint on my gloves before I handle my phone because it's about time to take a picture of this beauty. So I'm going to get the phone software brought up in my phone and I'm going to insert the picture that I took of this painting right about here. Okay, finally here I can offer you a better close-up view of what's going on on this canvas. Now this is just after I finished and we're still outside in the backyard in the sunshine. As you can see, there's quite a lovely contrast between the different colors that I chose. And I think the pouring technique I employed looks really cool on top of the spray painted and sort of ombre background, if you will. Anyway, I'm going to get this in the house as soon as I can because it's really not a good idea to let your paintings dry out in the bright sunlight. It happens to be an unusually warm day today when I'm doing this here in San Francisco. And I don't want the paint to dry out too quickly because that can lead to cracking in the surface of your paint. And that's a less than ideal outcome. So as soon as I can, I'm going to carry this baby all the way upstairs and let it rest in the house for three or four days before I handle it again. Okay, this is a shot of the painting lying flat upstairs in a safe place where I knew it wouldn't have to come in contact with any people or any of the pets in our house. I like to let these paintings dry extremely thoroughly, which for me is usually at least three or four days. I'd like it even better if it could be an entire week. Anyway, once this is dry, the next thing I'm going to do is attach a sawtooth hanger to the back of the frame so I can hang this beauty up on the wall. Voila, and here you go. This is how the painting looks now that it's completely dry and hung on the wall. As you can see, the fallow green that I used in this picture really reads more as black than it does green. Well, that's just one of those things that happens and I actually don't dislike it, so I'm okay with this look. I also have to say I really like how there's a few places where the hot pink really pops out, especially when it's layered on top of the magenta in the lower part of the painting. Overall, I think this is a really cool outcome and I would definitely consider this painting a success. I expect to employ this spray and pour type of mixture of techniques again on the next project I do as well. Okay, so here I wanted to give you a side-by-side -side look of the painting when it was still wet outside and now that it's dry and hanging on the wall indoors. As you can see, once the painting is dry, some of the effects are very different and some of the colors are significantly different once dry than they were when they were wet while I was still working on this piece. Okay, here's another shot of the piece that I happen to locate under a skylight at the top of the stairs in our house. Fortunately, the skylight never shines UV directly on the painting, so I don't think I have to worry about fading, but I do plan to cover this with a clear UV resistant varnish to help any fading from happening to begin with. Okay, insert the oohs and ahs here. I know I'm tooting my own horn here, but I have to say I really like the outcome of this painting. I think it's fun and organic, and it's got a cool factor, and I like this combination of colors as well. Plus, I have to say this gold element is giving me life. Okay, so here's one last look at the outcome of this painting before we come to the end of this video. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you hit the bell symbol, you'll get a notification every time we have new content to view. Anyway, thanks again for joining me today. Hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw today. And please come back and join us again soon.